Okay, welcome back everyone, I am Blaze here. So this is the second EverQuest Tips and Tricks video where I go through tips 11 through 12. I want to say thank you to Wandor, who's loaning me his monk real quick so I can show this aspect. Wandafu. So this is a function that was added on groups. As a group leader, you can set roles by right-clicking people's names. So if I right click Wandafu and I do roles, I can set him to be, say, the puller. And if you look, there's a little icon that'll show. Or I can click myself and I can make myself do certain roles. So I can say, make myself main assist. And what that will do is and see now when I target this guy, it puts an assist outline on him. So you can use that as a quick way to show what the group should be assisting on by having the main assist set, typically your tank, your DPSer. And you can also set who's going to be the main tank, but that's not as good usually. You can also unselect it by just checking it again. You can also set who you want to be the master looter, so who in the group is the one who runs the advanced loot window, distribute loot out. And then the last one is called the mark NPC feature. And what this does is you can use three of these. There's two versions of it. There's a group version that's just slash mark NPC. And then there's a raid version. It's a raid mark person that can be set. We do slash R mark NPC. And what this lets you do is if I click Mark NPC 1 on this guy, you'll see it puts a 1 next to his name, and it puts a little outline. It puts a little outline around him. Same, and you can do this up to three targets. If you click the escape key on your keyboard, it'll unselect whatever your target is currently. It's also a quick way to get out of windows. So if I press the escape key, it'll get me out of that advanced window. If I press the escape key, it'll close my bags. Any junk that's on my screen, like ultimate advancement window, if I want to quickly get that out, the escape key helps out with that. So yeah, the Mark NPC feature can help you mark up to three targets for raids, grouping content, and it. I typically use this for charming. I typically use this to charm a pet or to mark a charm pet in my group so that people know, don't kill it. We want to keep it alive. It's a group member, basically. Okay, so this next tip has to do with a quick way of getting targets without having to physically select each one. And what it is, is if you go to the options section and you go to keys and go to target under it, You'll see two ones. You'll see cycle through the nearest NPCs. I set that to my tab key on my keyboard. And then cycle through nearest PCs, player characters, and I have that set to caps lock. And what that lets me do, so instead of having to physically select this Bentley guy, I can just press the tab key on my keyboard and it'll cycle through all these different NPCs that are on my screen. It's a very quick way to get onto the next target without having to physically select it. Sometimes your target will be obstructed by like, okay, Mr. Whiskers here. I want to target this NPC, but it's not possible. I can't target Norrin right now because Mr. Whiskers is in the way. So if I just press the tab key, I'll eventually be able to get the right target that I want. And the caps lock key, where I have a set to swap between player characters, what I do with that is I have some items which are like insta-clickies, near insta-clickies, like say if I want to shrink people, or mainly what I use this for is for the blazing van braces, insta-cast like a 9 point damage shield. So what I will do is I'll go on a big mass group of people and I'll just press the caps lock key and you see it gets me a target and I will just Bam, caps lock key while I keep clicking these blazing van braces, and I'll just give everybody in a little area this buff. It's a way you can kind of quickly cycle between 
player character targets. I also use this for cures sometimes, of where if people get hit with like a disease dot or something, I'll just load up my Aria of Asceticism, for instance, and I'll just go into a mass group of people and just cycle through and I'll look to see if they have that disease on them. And if they do, I'll click my cure on them. You can use it for a couple different things. That's just one example of it. So yeah, caps lock is what I have set to cycle through the nearest PCs. It has a very short range though, unfortunately. And then tab is what I have set to cycle between NPCs, like grouping mobs or whatever it is. Okay, so this next tip has to do with how to interrupt casters, especially if you're dealing with a cleric mob that'll complete heal. So there's a couple different ways that you can do this. You can use a stun spell, something that does a stun for that matter, like clerics and paladins have it. You can use a bash or a slam ability, like many tanks do. You can use an ability that pushes mobs to a significant amount. Or you can mez. This is something that bards can do. So if I let the mez lapse on this guy, he'll start to try to cast on me. And if I watch the text chat here, I can interrupt this cast before he lands it off. So let's watch it. Mez is broken. Okay, he's going to start to cast. Engulfing Darkness. Okay, so I'm casting now. I'm gonna... And... His casting speed is pretty quick, but... You can definitely interrupt a complete heal. It's a... Definitely, it's a very reliable way as to... Interrupt casters. So long as you can get that mez off or that stun off quicker than they can cast it. Okay, so this next tip has to do with maps. So there's a website, EQ Maps, where you can download something called Brewal Maps. Yeah, you definitely want to get this. And it, it tells you how to install it and all that. It's very simple. Now, what Brewal Maps are is if you op if you click M on your keyboard, it'll first be default. You'll get this. It doesn't have as much information, though, as Brewal Maps. So if you click Brewal Maps, You'll see it would fill out with a lot more information. Sometimes it can get a bit much, but this is a way that you can get information on some zones which have nothing on them by default. There's some zones which give you nothing at all. So this is a way to get a lot more information out of your maps by using Brewal. And as well, there's another bonus feature in Brewal Maps, which is the height filter. It'll only show you stuff on your map that's within your X, Y, and Z axis, I guess. Yeah, your Z axis is what I mean. So how high or low you are in this map. So this is really, really useful for multi-tiered zones like SSRA or say the hole or even if you're trying to get to Lord Inquisitor Saru and Sancta Saru, there's this huge maze you have to go through but it's on this different level, so it's like really spammy if you don't have height filter on. Height filter is a huge trick to help you get through some of these zones that are kind of nasty. So definitely I'd get Brule Maps if you're going to be playing on live servers. Okay, this next trip is a way to quickly send a tell to someone. Let's see if that cured that guy. So what you want to do is you want to target a person and you want to do slash TT which basically sends, means tell to. So you don't even have to type out their name. <laughs> that cure helps. And it will send a tell to them by that means. So some people have some really crazy names that you don't even want to try to type out. Like, uh, let me see, who has a really bad name that I don't want to try to type out? Some names are really long. Yeah, this name, okay. I don't want to type that name out. So all you have to do is just do slash TT and it would send a... Uh, tell out to this person. That's a quick way to send tells to people. And if you got a tell from someone, you can do slash R as a means to reply to them. Quickly, the last person that sent you a tell. Okay, so this next tip is a way to cycle through previously sent commands or messages. 
And what it is, is you just hold down the shift key and you press up or down on your arrow keys. So if I do like slash who all arugula, for instance, or if I do slash care for my bind point, I can move between these different lines of text by just using the arrow keys and by holding down shift. The main reason why people use this is to repeat themselves, like if they send a message in raid or in groups. It's also incredibly useful for when the bizarre or prior to the bazaar, when people still use the common lands tunnel, you can repeat your want to sell or want to buy line of text in auction by just doing this. You don't have to retype it out every single time. It's a really nice feature. Okay, so this next one is a tip about Gina. It's a program which gives you a lot of situational awareness and cues on your screen. I have a video on it. I'll actually leave a link to it. But this is the program itself and I'll show an example of it so if I click Celos on it'll give me a timer okay so I have two minutes and 30 seconds left on my Celos so it's usually used for raids or just for giving general situational awareness it's a very very useful tip I use this tremendously in all my raids and all my grouping content to let me know a lot better about what's going on at any specific point in time. Or say if like Invis is wearing off or any of that, so. Okay, so now these next few tips have to deal with macros with commands you can make in the socials page. So one of them that's really nice is called auto inventory. So say if like I forge something, so you see I have this on my cursor. I can either just click it on my like little character emblem I have on here, or there's another option, which is to use the auto inventory macro and it'll automatically put it in your inventory. And you can make a macro that works with say forage by doing a little pause and uh, delay function so that you're automatically sending junk from forage into your inventory so it's not on your cursor all the time. And the next one is the use item feature. So my say Breath of Harmony, it's an insta cast buff that gives me Niv's Melody of Preservation. And there's a way that I can use this or say if I want to have J Boots get popped on any of these. Notice if I use this, it'll pop on some of these instant cast items. So the way you can use items in a macro is simple. Just use slash use item and then type in the full name of that particular item from your inventory. Try to play the golden hackle hammer, all that. Um, the way I use this is, say, if I'm song twisting, or I do an instrument swap, I actually have Breath of Harmony baked into my instrument swaps. You'll notice I will have Nivis Melody of Preservation as soon as I swap to my stringed instrument. Yep, and there's the buff. So that's a really nice trick. And another one is for alternate advancements. There are some special alternate advancement abilities which you can activate by a macro too. And the way you can tell how to do that is each alternate advancement, when they're a toggleable one, they'll give you a ID number to use them. So let's say like fading memories. Let's look for fading memories. Here's fading memories. So a fading memories ID is 212. To activate fading memories, I have to have a command that uses the 212 number. So all you have to do is do slash alt activate and then put in the number of the AA ability. So 212 in this case, and it will do it for me. And you can even put cooldown timers on some of your macros too. I will show that in just a moment. Okay, so this is how you set a cooldown timer on a special made macro. So this is one I have for the AA called Entrap that Rangers get. That is a clickable snare out of AAs. So it's a 219 on its ID. 
So Alt Activate 219. And in that macro, let's see, it has a cooldown of four seconds. So it takes, or sorry, it has a refresh time of five seconds. So it takes five seconds for this ability to become usable again once I click it. So what you can do is in the macro itself, you can do slash timer and each 10 units, that's one second, that's two seconds, three seconds, and so forth. So if I do 50, that'll be a five second timer. And if you watch this, it will not be clickable until those five seconds go away. So that's one thing you can do with that. And as well, you can even change the icon of a macro if you want to. You can go assign icon, and this is a snare, right? So let me look for the one that looks like a snare. You can click a generic one like this one. There we go. Accept, and change the icon of that macro to that. That's kind of cool. So that's the trick for the macros, some stuff you can do within them. And the last tip I want to give, I have a video about this called What is Instancing? And this is talking about Agents of Change and the Pick Zone feature. This is one of the best quality of life improvements that is on live and timeline progression servers. So Agents of Change are these special NPCs that let you create private versions of zones called DZs, Dynamic Zones where only 72 people are allowed and you can pretty much kill all the raid content within it uninterrupted by other people. It's a way that you, people schedule raids on live servers. So that's an agent of change and if I go into plane of fire here I can show what the pick zone feature is. And what that roughly is is that if a grouping zone gets overcrowded or it hits a certain player threshold of a number there will be another version of the zone that spawns, pops, that will be empty for other people to form groups there. It's a way to handle overcrowding in a zone. So if you do slash pick, I have a macro here, the slash, yeah, slash pick, it'll show you all the available different versions of the same exact zone. And you can go to one that's less populated, for instance, and get a group in there, or find an empty camp in there. So. That's all for this particular video. I hope it helps people out. Yeah, tips 11 to 20. I hope this definitely helps people out. Thank you all for watching.